Now, overall, if we were to plug in positive integer arguments, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, three is pi and it's e, so you can also plug in pi and e, really doesn't quite matter. Good morning, fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. We are going to do something really exciting today. We are going to calculate the half Fibonacci number. I, I mean, you guys know by now what the Fibonacci numbers are. They are, for example, so the zero of one is zero, the first one is one, the fourth one is three, should be three, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's three, okay, this is actually right. And today we would like to take a look at what fractional Fibonacci number could possibly be, okay, this is kind of random, but it does make sense if we consider a nice extension to the real numbers of our um, end Fibonacci number term that we have found out in the video, you can find down there in the description. Also, this video is kind of special, okay, you know, we just now reached 100k subs and also I'm polishing up the channel at the moment. New outro scene, new intro scene, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's kind of amazing. Also, I'm working with Manum at the moment. So the, the animation engine that Free Blue and Brown uses, Grant Sanderson. And actually one portion of this video is being created using Manum and I hope you are going to enjoy this. This is going to be kind of a new era for the new quality of Flamble Maps. I hope you are going to enjoy this. If you did, please share the video after you are done watching till the end. <laughs> we are going to dive right in. So, like I mentioned before, there's this one video you can find on there in the description. So the n Fibonacci number, we are going to call it f of n, can be expressed for positive integer arguments also with zero as the golden ratio to the nth power minus the conjugate of the golden ratio to the nth power over square root of five. We have found this out using linear algebra before. And now, I would like to rewrite all of this and then let n go to just some random real number, for example, negative pi. And then we are going to end up with an extension that actually does make sense and also um, works for our arguments when they are of positive integer value. Okay, this is the one most important thing here. We want to find an extension that also works for all the arguments that, that we have found out before, for all n's out of natural numbers. Now let us rewrite the conjugate. Okay, it's the little brother of phi. It's one minus the square root of five over two. I would like to write it with respect to the golden ratio of phi that we have here. How can we do this? Where well, we are going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of one minus square root of five and the conjugate is one plus square root of five. So one plus square root of five over one plus square root of five. What we have up here is the norm. So difference of two squares, one minus five is going to give us negative four. Negative four is two times, uh, negative two times two. Okay, if you trust the piano axioms and the extension to the negative um, integers. So two times one plus square root of five. Now, like I said, four is two times two, meaning the two is going to cancel out. And what we have here is negative two over one plus square root of five. Two over one plus square root of five is just one over the golden ratio. Okay, golden ratio is one plus square root of five over two, take the reciprocal and you are there. So this is negative one over five. So negative five to negative one power. Okay, now we're going to plug this new definition into here. Let us go ahead and get started. So phi to the nth power minus negative phi to negative one power to the nth power over square root of five. You know, by the rules of powers, we can split this up. So this negative one to the nth power and then phi to the negative nth power. Meaning overall, we are going to end up with, for now, phi to the nth power minus negative one to the nth power, phi to the negative nth power over square root of five. <sighs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> Now, overall, if we were to plug in positive integer arguments, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, three is pi and it's e, so you can also plug in pi and e, really doesn't quite matter, then negative one to the nth power does make perfect sense. But what happens if, for example, our n is one half? What do we want to do today? Well, one half, hmm, this kind of sucks, okay. Negative one to the one half power, square root of negative one, that's, that's a complex number. This is our imaginary unit i. Okay, so maybe we have to do some extension here. Negative one can be expressed as 
or for example on the principal branch, just uh, working with the principal branch now, as e to the i pi, Euler's identity. So at first, let us define a function that goes from the real numbers to the real numbers in this case, or from the real numbers to the complex numbers, should I rather say f of x, okay, we are just going to let our n go to some real numbered x is equal to phi to the x power minus negative 1 to the x power phi to the negative x power over square root of 5. And like I said before, negative 1 on the principal branch is e to the i pi. So by the power rules, we have that this is phi to the x power minus e to the i pi x phi to the negative x power over square root of 5. Hmm, okay, if we were to plug in one half, then, well, we would end up with a complex number as our Fibonacci number, the one half Fibonacci number. I mean, it's something that could work out, but I would like to make use of one more property of our um, Fibonacci numbers. If we have two given Fibonacci numbers, for example, one and four, we can actually find a linear combination out of, do, uh, out of those two Fibonacci numbers, meaning we can take two Fibonacci numbers, for example, um, fa, and add it to some kind of f of b. Now we place some scalars in front of it, for example, lambda one and lambda two, and a linear combination of those two is actually a solution to our Fibonacci sequence yet again, to our Fn, for example. This is just how the Fibonacci number works, uh, or the Fibonacci numbers in general. You take a linear combination of two distinct Fibonacci numbers, or they also can be the same, then you average them out, and then you are going to end up with a new solution, let's call it f of c, to the Fibonacci sequence. You can do the same thing with what we have right here. What we can do? We can take our f of x, add it to the complex conjugate of f of x. We are going to get rid of exactly the sign part in here. Okay, take a piece of paper, try it out for yourself. And then we are going to average it out. We are going to take a factor of one half and actually end up with simply the real part of f of x being a solution to the Fibonacci numbers yet again. So we are going to define ourselves a new function. I'm going to call it fib, okay? Fib of x, which is overall a superposition, a linear combination of Fibonacci numbers, okay? Of solutions to the Fibonacci sequence, but it's also just the real part of f of x. So that's the real part of f of x which is nothing but, okay, phi to the x power minus, and the real part, using all those formulas, just cosine pi times x, phi to the negative x power over square root of five. This is our extension of our Fibonacci numbers. And the cool thing is, if we were to plug in n's into here, so positive integer values, this actually corresponds yet again with our regular f of n. So this makes up for a nice extension. And with this formula, you can easily find out the half Fibonacci number. But before we get into it, a little animation. Let us first draw a graph of the fib function that we have just defined. As you might have noticed, our function oscillated pretty hard in the negatives, but then kept increasing the more positive our x argument got. If you were to zoom out on this graph, then you would notice that the left hand side is oscillating pretty hard and the amplitude is getting even higher the more negative our x argument gets. As mentioned before, our new fib of x function is in accordance with natural arguments. For example, if we were to take a look at the first Fibonacci number, which marks the point 1, 1 on our graph, it's actually as the y argument in accordance with our original model of the Fibonacci numbers, which is 1. Another example of this would be the 4 Fibonacci number, meaning we are going to plug 4 into our fib of x and going to end up with an argument of 3, meaning the 4 Fibonacci number is nothing but 3. And now for the point of this video, one could ask the question, if we have this graph here, what could the half Fibonacci number possibly be? Meaning, what? Y value are we going to get out when we plug one half into fib of x? So I hope you did enjoy this part. Um, it took me quite some effort because I'm new to this, but it, it was a lot of fun programming with Manim in Python. 
Now, half Fibonacci number, this is the question now that we are striving for. So, Fib of one half, this is what we are going to do. Fib of one half is thus phi to the one half power minus the cosine of pi over two, phi to the negative one half power over square root of five. Okay, I have chosen the one half Fibonacci number here because it actually gives you pretty nice value. I mean, there are a lot of Fibonacci numbers that have pretty good values, okay? The most important thing is that we are going to get rid of this cosine part. Well, cosine of pi over two, if we start here, oh, this is just zero. So this whole part is going to vanish. Meaning overall, our solution to the half Fibonacci number is nothing but square root of phi over five. Can we do something with this? Um, I believe we could possibly do something with this. I mean, it's one plus square root of five over two. You can possibly manipulate this into something different yet again by multiplying some stuff. Um, yeah, we can write it out basically. So this is going to give us the square root of, okay, this is going to give us one tenth and then one plus square root of five. I mean, you can't really manipulate it into anything else. This is just what it looks like. But I mean, it's kind of a nice closed form solution to this problem, okay? It's, it's nothing wild with um, like complex numbers that we would have here. You can also plug the one half into here, but then you're going to end up with some sign term. I don't think that it's going to evaluate to the same thing. But using linear combinations of Fibonacci numbers is a really powerful tool. I mean, you can look into linear combinations. If you are familiar with linear algebra, you might already know where this is going, where this does come from. But it's the fact that you can take the linear combinations of Fibonacci numbers and you end up with a solution to the Fibonacci numbers yet again, to the Fibonacci sequence. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did enjoy this insight, then make sure to tell me down there in the comments that you really like this Menem part. I would highly appreciate it. But before we end the video, I would like to thank Brain.org for sponsoring this video. I was pretty excited about posting today's video. Visualizing functions with Manem is a lot of fun and I hope you also got a kick out of it. If you are really into visualizations, animations and interactive learning experiences, then I encourage you to try out Brilliant today. Brilliant's mission is to help people achieve their learning goals, so whether you're a student, a professional brushing up or learning cutting edge topics or someone who just wants to understand the world better, you should check out Brilliant. Set a goal to improve yourself, even during those trying times. Take your time and then work at that goal a little bit every day. Brilliant makes that easy with interactive explorations and a mobile app that you can use on the go. If you are naturally curious, want to build your problem solving skills or need to develop confidence in your analytical abilities, then get Brilliant Premium to learn something new every day. Brilliant is in my opinion one of the best online services available to learn educational content in a fun and highly intuitive way and I for myself enjoy using the product on a regular basis. If this feels like it's something for you, make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it you can get completely free access to Brilliant and the first 200 people to actually use the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription. You can really support the channel by trying out Brilliant today. And if you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. You know how you can support the channel in various other ways. And up until the next video, I'm wishing you guys a Fibonacci day. Ciao!